In this segment, we're going to cover some special tactics that come specifically from my wrestling background and Greco-Roman technique. And these are things that I've adapted from wrestling to the fight game. I'm going to use Nate again, one of our Team Quest fighters, to uh, show some of these special tactics. And one of the first things you'll notice if you've ever worked out with a wrestler, and a, and a lot of martial artists that train with, with wrestlers for the first time, they come back the next day and they're like, my God, my neck, what did I do? And, and you'll find a lot of wrestlers like to work the head. And the way that we work the head is a little bit different than, say, a tie fighter who wants to establish a good double collar tie so he can land knees and control there. We tend to use not only our dominant positions that we've covered in other segments from the underhook or double underhook, but we use a collar tie a lot, a single collar tie. And in using that single collar tie in combination with an underhook, you can set up a lot of things and be very controlling and very dominating and put a lot of pressure on your opponent. If you've ever pummeled and, and done some of this fighting from the clinch range, it, it takes a lot of gas, it takes a lot of conditioning. And, and once you train that way on a regular basis, then you can use that intensity, that in-your-face kind of style of fighting, and use that, in, that conditioning as a tool against your opponent as well. So once you get in his face, you stay in his face, you don't give him a chance to breathe, you don't give him a chance to, to pause and think about what's going on. He's constantly on the defense. And so that's a, a very nice tactic to have in your arsenal. Now using that collar tie, I don't want to just stand in front of my opponent and hold his head. Again, you see this in wrestling sometimes because both guys are using the collar tie and in, in my opinion, using it ineffectively. What I want to do is I want to, off this collar tie, I want to create angles. If I stand in front, he can collar tie me, he can do the same thing and we get into this changing inside ties or collar ties and neither one of us is very effective. But if I use a little forward pressure, bring my elbow down and in and put it in the chest of my opponent. <clears throat> Pull his head forward a little bit so that he's hunched over and I create an angle as I move my hip towards his hip. Okay, now I'm not standing in front of him. I've moved away from his free hand. I'm blocking his near hand. I can be I'm kneeing or, or punching or elbowing. And I, what I want to do is I want to keep him off balance sides. Okay, underhook from one side to the other using that collar tie. And I'm just going to keep working his head and the more he resists and the more he tries to stand up, the more tension and the, and the more difficult it is and the more tired he starts to get. So I want to transfer by moving my feet from one side to the other. Okay, so I've become un a little more unpredictable. I'm not just straight ahead out here in front in a more traditional tie collar. I'm moving, changing that angle from side to side. Okay, and now when you start adding strikes and attacks to that position, it becomes pretty devastating. So once I establish my clinch and I work to that collar tie and I establish that angle, now I'm in a position to start throwing uppercuts or hooks or elbows, okay? And again, it's pretty, pretty simple. If I'm uppercutting from this position, I've got his head tucked and in. I want to use my, my power, my hips. I don't want to just sit here and arm punch, although they may hurt and they may be irritating. You're going to do a lot more damage if you keep the punch short and choppy and you use it, throw it from your hip. So you bend your knees a little and you come into it with your power, the power of your hips. Now he's not just going to stand here and take it, he's probably going to cover and start to try and protect himself from that uppercut. Okay, as he does that, and then maybe I want to change to that hook. And in a combination, as he alternates, I alternate and go from one to the other. And I may get two or three or four punches off from one side, and as he starts to cover and come around and square up, to tie me up, that's when I'll decide and change and move to that other side. So basically I'm going to go boom, 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 and then shift to the other side as he starts to adjust. Okay, and I'm just going to keep going back and forth, throwing those uppercuts and those hooks from that position. Now if you've ever punched a lot, and a lot of times after a lot of my fights, uh, my hands will swell up 
from, from hitting so much. And sometimes a more effective thing, especially from this close clinch range, is to use your elbow instead of your hand. Number one, you don't take the risk of breaking your hands. Number two, your elbow's very hard, very pointed, probably gonna do a lot more damage, either cut or hurt your opponent a lot more from, from an elbow. And you can use several different elbows from this collar tie, a straight cross elbow where I'm coming, almost like throwing that hook, only instead of hitting him with my hand, I'm turning my thumb down. By turning my thumb down, it brings the point of my elbow out. Instead of here where I'm using the forearm, I wanna hit with that nice sharp point. So I turn my, my thumb down towards my hips and I rotate that elbow right over. Boom. I can also, just like throwing my uppercut, I can throw an up elbow and skip that hard point of my elbow off of his face from this position as well. So you can, in concert, throw hooks and uppercuts with your fists or elbows and up elbows with your hands. And if you <clears throat> change sides and change that angle of attack and keep your opponent off balance, it can be pretty effective and pretty devastating. You land a few, you score a few, and a guy starts to square up and starts to get out or away or come into you, you want to go right back to that dominant position. Establish that underhook. Control. Back to control, move him around, and I shift back out. Offensive again. And then right back in to my underhook. So short little bursts of intensity. Score your points, land your blows, and then back to that position of control. You control the tempo of the fight. I like to do, especially from this, this underhook position here, is, uh, is as I rotate and use the collar tie, I start throwing a lot of knees from here. When you're this close and you see a lot of tie fighters, they do this kind of skip knees and knees up the middle. They're very effective. You can do the same things from this wrestling position, from this underhook position, or from the single collar tie. I can throw knees. Okay, and I like to again knee the thighs. Sometimes we're in here chest to chest, we're very tight. Like it's hard for me to get any effective knees to the body. It's hard to create any space. Maybe I want to make this guy step or move a leg. So I can either choose to pick that knee up and knee him on the outside line of his thigh. Or I can bring the opposite knee across and knee him on the inside of his thigh. Now, individually, those blows, more than anything, are just an irritation. But if you've ever had a charley horse or had somebody punch you in the thigh real hard, there's an accumulation there that over time become very irritating and cause you know, some debilitation, a lack of mobility if you really tear that muscle up. In other words, they just hurt. <laughs> uh, so you, there can be effective tactics to create opportunities for other things and just a general irritant to your opponent. So I like to again, knee to the front side or inside of the thigh from the collar tie or from the, this dominant position, the underhook here, here. Doesn't matter where you're, where you're at here, I, I can feel where his legs are and I can knee him in those thighs, and it kind of sucks. Okay, again, from the collar, I have access, especially if I have him trapped against a solid barrier here. I've got his head, I've got an arm, I can knee those thighs, okay. And then you move up into the midsection. Same thing, I've got that dominant position, that underhook, that collar tie, I can knee into the short ribs 
I can create space with my hips and bring that knee straight up into the middle to the bread basket of solar plexus. Okay. And those are, again, a very effective knees. The more tight we get, the more crowded we are here chest to chest, the more difficult it becomes to really land effective knees. But again, you're scoring points, you're keeping your opponent off balance, and you're making him work. And that's important. Okay, you move up from there to trying to, to knee the head. Now, a real common thing for guys to do when you get a dominant position, you get an underhook, is they'll bury their head and back their hips out. They're trying to get out of that underhook. Maybe they don't know re-pummeling, they've never pummeled before, they've never had somebody control them in this dominant position. This is a common posture, a common position for people. And rather than try and keep boosting them up to duck them or to, to knee them low, I'll go ahead and bring them down and try and knee them. And again, changing that angle as their heads and hips sag, I'll change that angle. And now from here, I can knee to the head pretty effectively. And those, again, it's a pretty large object. Your knee, it's very hard. Anytime you hit a guy in the head with your knee or in the face with your knee, it's, it's pretty devastating. So from these dominant positions, the underhook and the collar tie, changing those angles, using those knees, uppercuts, hooks, elbows, you can be pretty effective. Again, short bursts of, of scoring points, and then right back to the control of that dominant position. Okay, moving your opponent, keeping him off balance. You want to be unpredictable. I don't want to just be straight ahead. I'm just moving in one direction. It's easy for him to adjust to that direction of attack. So I want to be moving from one side to the other side, back and forth, in and out. The more unpredictable I am, the, more, the harder it is for him to adjust to my pressure, the more off balance he is. He never has a chance to catch his breath, to find his position, and to neutralize my attacks. So the first thing you're going to find out is that this is a very taxing position. It takes a lot of conditioning and you have to build up to be able to do this over a length of time. This pummeling and, and dynamic position of using the collar and the underhook and creating this kind of pressure on your opponent. Once you've trained and done it for a long time, again, you can use that as a conditioning tool to wear your opponent out. And that's very, very important. And I think you'll find that the, the intensity that a lot of wrestlers bring to this sort of thing is what a lot of martial artists or more traditional martial artists have trouble with. And we're gonna go from using those elbows and uppercuts and hooks from that collar tie and landing those knees to a dominant position, but I'm gonna modify this underhook that I, that I use as a dominant position. And from that modified underhook, what I'm gonna do is from this chest to chest position, I'm gonna bring my underhook in and wrap my hand to my opponent's face, okay? And this is gonna do a couple of things. One, if I push his face away, I've got some counter pressure here from the collar tie. If he wants to punch me with that hand, I'm gonna use that elbow on that collar tie to keep him from hitting me in the face. I'm gonna create counter pressure by pulling his body into me this way and pushing his face away from me that way. Now it creates this, this counter pressure situation where I've kinda of got him locked up. Especially against a solid barrier, this can be real effective. And now from here I can land a lot of knees, okay? I can do a lot of things with my legs and knees to really irritate him and hurt him. And what I like to do from here is I like to cover his nose and mouth. Make it difficult for him to breathe. Again, make it hard for him. And in doing that, especially if we're tied up here, he's got the same position I do. So if you grab your underhook nade and lock your hands, we end up in this clinch position. We're kind of neutralizing each other. We're stuck here. I can knee, I can, I can uh, <clears throat> knee his thighs and knee his body from here. What I want to do is I want to modify my underhook. I'm going to take my underhook hand and I'm just going to wrap it to his face here and make it more difficult for him to breathe. Now, if he's got his hands locked, he's locking me in. It's hard for me to get out. As soon as it gets difficult for him to breathe, He's gonna unlock his hands to peel that hand off his face. And that's what I'm waiting for right there. All I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bump this shrug and bump this arm over my head. 
Okay. Now from here, I have my choice. I can sag on him with my body weight and ride him to the mat. Most guys, as soon as you bump over, are gonna circle their hips away and try to square up with you. And when this happens, that's when I'm gonna release and, and really score some points. The punch that hurts the most is the one you don't see, and you're definitely not gonna see the punch coming from here. So again, modified underhook, counter pressure, kneeing, shrunk, shuck that arm over the head. Depending on how he reacts, you can ride him to the ground. Here. Or as he recovers, I'm throwing those punches. That combination. The overhand hook or uppercut combination. So this modified underhook can be a pretty effective tool. Another situation that I like to use from this clinch tie up position is an off balance. Okay, it's just a, a, a I'm going to break my opponent's balance. I can do that in a couple of different ways. From this underhook position, we talked about controlling that danger zone and kind of having that feel and having your hips in. Okay, from this underhook position, what I'm doing is planting my foot right inside his foot. And I don't have to look to do that, I can feel that. I can feel when my knee is against his thigh, I can feel my foot in his hip. Okay, and that's what I'm looking for. And now, like taking the leg out of a three-legged table, I want to bump that leg straight back. I'm bumping it out at an angle with my knee inside his. I'm shrugging my hip, bumping that out. Now as I bump it out, I want to take a half a step back and create a space for him to fall into between us. Basically, I'm going to snap him down or off balance him from this knee bump. Okay, and I'm doing this from my underhook. So the timing here is as I bump that leg out, I'm going to pound on his shoulder blade and knock him down. Okay, so we're here, we're in this clinch, we're fighting for position. I've got a nice underhook, a dominant position. I can feel my thigh and knee right inside his thigh and knee. Okay, I'm timing the bump with the pound. So I'm bumping the leg out and pounding the upper body forward. I take that half a step back to create that space for him to fall into. And if for no other reason, and if you're tied in here, and you're feeling like you can't get out and create the position or, or manipulation that you want, I can bump him off balance to change the situation. Maybe he doesn't go all the way to the mat, but I bump him off balance so I can get my head back over to my underhook. Or I bump him off balance, I can snap him down, catch his head, knee him, okay, pull him all the way to the mat from here, from this front headlock position is a good technique. Okay, maybe I just want to bump him off balance to create space to score. Throw a combination, throw a knee. So that off balance, bumping that leg and pounding that bat can work in several different situations and create offense for you, change the situation so that you can become in a more dominant position or create opportunities for you to land strikes. <clears throat> Again, doing it now for my underhook. Okay, I've got a dominant position. We're jockeying for position. I feel my hip and thigh come inside. The other side of that coin, I can do this from his underhook. Okay, he's trying to get an underhook. He's trying to get inside position. He's trying to establish dominance. Okay. I'm feeling like he's starting to get there, or maybe I'm baiting him. Maybe I'm letting him start to slide that underhook in, okay, so that he starts to push. He starts to feel like he's getting position. And now, again, I slid my leg right inside his leg, 
in the same position, only I'm over the top. He's established inside control. I'm going to do the same off balance. Okay. So, first one was from my dominant position, me being inside. Second one, from his dominant position. He's getting inside position, whether I just let him come in that far or he actually achieved that on his own, that's up to you. Obviously, he gets a dominant position. You've got to find a way to re-pummel. You've got to find a way to get out of here. He's going to control you. This could be that option. Okay. Maybe you're having trouble executing any technique on this guy. So you're going to bait him a little bit. You're going to let him have that little bit of an underhook. Now, obviously, I don't want to give it to him clear up here. It's not going to do me any good. It's going to be very hard to get out of an underhook that's clear up there and locked in. But I'll let him in just enough so he feels like he's getting some position. Now he's going to start to drive. He's going to start to push to get that underhook, which is what I want him to do because I want to bump that out. Okay. As he starts to push to get that underhook, I'm pinching it off with my elbow. So we can't get it all the way up where it's difficult to deal with. It's shallow, stepping right inside, bumping. Okay, again, creating that space for him to fall into. Okay, so you have two sides of the coin there. My dominant position or the start of his dominant position. Okay, there's a third option there, and that's where <coughs> we're here again in that kind of that over-under position. Okay. And now instead of going on the side where the underhook is, I can also bump, step across and bump that other side and off balance him on that side. Okay, so it's giving you a third option. As you can see, the options start to become endless. So my underhook's over here. Again, I'm kind of caught up in that 50-50 position where he's got just as much as I have. Okay. I can move my head to my underhook side. Now that the bump that we just covered on the point of control, the underhook side works. Well, if I can't get over there, I can step in okay, and bump on that opposite side. So I'm bumping the cross knee. Okay. Okay, again, change the position. Create an opportunity. Off balance your opponent. Keep him guessing as to what's going to happen here. Huh. Front headlock, knee, front headlock, pull him to the mat. Just off balance him so you can create an opportunity to strike. Those off balances are very effective to keep your opponent guessing, especially if he's giving you energy. He's pushing, it becomes a lot easier to off balance him. Yeah, you're meeting his pressure and then you're bumping it out and releasing it. Again, bumping it out with your hip, creating that space for him to fall into. And that's real important. Okay. Getting the underhook on me. Get the timing of it, the feel of it. It happens pretty easily. It will surprise you the first time you do it and the guy falls down. You're like, holy cow, what was that? So it takes some practice, it takes some timing, but it's worth the work. Now, I'm talking about one side of the coin and that's being effective from this collar tie. And we deal with a lot of tie fighters, guys who like this double collar tie, which if you get locked in here, can, can be effective and can be hard to get out of. <clears throat> There's a couple of little tricks that we use in Greco to counter this, this collar tie. And you're gonna see a lot of guys collar tie and kind of the tie, the tie counters are just to kind of come up inside. And again, you get into that <clears throat> battle for inside position here. But neither, but neither guy is really being effective or establishing a good dominant position, okay? If you think of the wrestling perspective and, and establishing that good underhook, which is a dominant position that we like to use, he's got these elbows in here. Okay, all I'm going to do is reach across, 
cross hand, and I'm going to bump this block, this elbow, that line of defense, he's using his elbow and his hand to keep me out. I'm just going to bump that elbow out of the way. And when I do, I'm going to shoot that arm up and grab that underhook. So come across, bump that elbow out of the way. Counter that double collar tie. Boom. Okay, there's my underhook. Pretty simple. I want to keep my head up, my hips in. Okay, I don't want to start sagging and trying to back out of this situation. I want to move into it. My head's up and my hips are in. I want to close that space, smother those knees, smother his, his ability to attack me. Okay, I want to bump that block out of the way and establish my dominant position. I go right to my collar, right to my dominant position here. Okay, doesn't matter. Block it out, bump it out. Okay. The wrong thing to do is to back up, take your hips away. You create space for those attacks. You want to crowd him, head up. Turtle your neck. And turtling your neck, I mean you shorten your neck. You just shrug your shoulders and bring your neck down in so it's not extended and quite as long. The way you can resist the, the uh, notion that you want to bring your head forward and back out of those positions, you can turtle your neck, bring your hips in, and, and stand up straight. It takes away a lot of this guy's leverage and his options for strikes. So turtle your neck, okay? You're bumping that, up, <clears throat> that elbow out of the way and digging for that underhook. Okay, another option here as you turtle your neck is to just come outside of both arms, push those elbows together, and crowd into them. Now from here, you can slip your shoulders inside. Most guys don't expect you to move into them. They're used to people trying to push and get away, and back out of this situation. So when you turtle your neck and you move your hips up into them, you'll catch them off guard. You'll take away a lot of their leverage on your neck. You're still going to have to fight out of the position, but you're going to, again, do what they don't expect you to do, which is to move into them. Another option that I like from here, from this double collar tie, is I'm just going to take my hand outside and reach around and try and grab the far side of Nate's ear. And all I'm going to do is walk that hip into Nate's body. So as he has his collar ties in, I walk that and pull his head into me, walk my hips into his hips, and it forces pressure on this elbow and pops that hand off. So he's got that collar tie, it's walking in, popping that hand off. As soon as that hand comes off, I'm going to dig for my underhook or my dominant position on that opposite side here. So again, I'm reaching around, grabbing the far ear, walking my hip into his hip here. Okay, popping that hand off. As soon as that hand pops off, I'm digging for my dominant position on the opposite side. It can be a real effective way to go ahead and dig out of that. Popping off that collar tie. Again, hips in, head up. You know, kind of a special tactic that we've been using a lot lately on the ground as well as on the feet, especially when you have a guy trapped, you're in this clinch position, and that's to use a good shoulder punch. And it's kind of an old dirty boxing technique in that I'm gonna, his head is resting on my arm here. I'm just going to bring my shoulder back and forward and hit him in the face with the front of my shoulder. It's a nice hard bone there on the top of your shoulder. I'm going to try and bring that. And I don't want to come down and up this way because he's holding on to me. It's hard for me to come down. I have to come back and bring my hips into him and then bring my shoulder forward. You can do the same thing when you have a guy trapped on the ground, but it's also effective. Again, little things you can do to change the position. To make this guy react to you, to irritate him, to frustrate him, to make him work. And the shoulder punch is another way you can do that. Again, you're stuck here in the dominant position, he's trying to tie me up. Okay, I'm just going to shoulder punch him, hit him in the face with that shoulder until he adjusts or moves. Okay, it can be pretty effective. I'm using that a lot lately. So there's a lot of positions here from this dominant underhook and this collar tie. 
opportunities for you to score. Land good uppercuts, hooks, elbows, knock your opponent down, keep him off balance, and generally just get in his face and make him work. Use your conditioning as a tool.